Make it personal. This is the Athletic Scholarship Podcast, episode number 144. Welcome to another edition of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. I'm John Kugler, Athletic Scholarship Coach and a dad of two scholarship athletes. I'm also the CEO of Recruit Me. I'm a podcaster, author, and speaker. And we're in our summer prep podcast series. What do I mean by that? Summer's coming up. We got to get you ready because recruiting season will be upon us before we know it. In this episode, you hear about one athlete's secret weapon and how it landed her an athletic scholarship at a D1 school. That's coming up. But before we get there, some things to let you know about. Uh, let me just ask you this. Do you have your resume together? What I mean is your athletic resume for college coaches, otherwise known as a player profile. I want to make sure you have that most important document ready to go. And so I've included in the uh, recruiting power pack, if you go to my website, you've got a, a template there to use for your own resume. This is really key as we get set for the summer. And if you would, go there to my website right now, recruitme.com. Even put, put this on pause. Put this episode on pause and go right to my website and pick it up at recruitme.com. You'll get a couple other things there with it, but the player profile is key for you. Well, I'm working on a recruiting book series. I think I mentioned that. Uh, handbooks, I think, is what I'm going to refer to them as. They'll be short and effective. You know, you've got um, the the playbook that I put out Um and that is the step-by-step -step approach. And what I'll do in these handbooks is look like I'll be going deeper. I'll be springboarding from the play from the playbook and digging deeper into each of the areas which are most important for you in pursuing an athletic scholarship. Really get your handle on the recruiting thing. So uh, I, I'm working on those. I I really haven't made much progress in the last month or so. I've done a lot of traveling. In fact, I. Just got back from an overseas trip out of the country. And, uh, <laughs> you know, here it is Tuesday. It's release day for the podcast. It, it's Tuesday evening, as a matter of fact. So I got to get this wrapped up and get this out and been really thinking through what this episode should be about and making it personal is what I came up with. Uh, it's a, it's a key element, as you'll see. But, um, anyway, I'm rambling. Maybe it's because I'm tired. However, I've got good notes in front of me. I'm going to stay on task. I'm going to stay on task, okay? Uh, I got a question for you. Uh, could you leave me a review? I haven't had a review since last fall. I need to get several of you to go to iTunes, uh, go to your Apple Podcast app, and just leave a review of this podcast. I've gotten so many good comments from people. Uh, if you do me a favor and tell the world about it, other people will listen because Apple and iTunes will go ahead and serve this up to people who are interested in sports and so you can help a lot of other sports families. Uh, I want to start with the playbook tip of the week. I always do that out of my athletic scholarship playbook. And this is about video. Uh, and the tip is this. It's from page 64 in the athletic scholarship playbook. Most coaches will not get a chance to see you compete in person. Uh, therefore, your video is indeed very important. But let me warn you, do not send a video or a video link unless the coach asks for one. Coaches receive dozens of links each day or week, and most will not watch the videos until they have a sincere interest in you. Uh, when I say that most coaches won't get a chance to see you compete in person, eventually most of them will. They're not going to offer a scholarship unless they really do see you in person. However, they're going to go through video in order to see who they're going to pursue further and then to see in person, but that's usually down the road. So there you go. It's the playbook tip of the week. Um, and if you like the athletic scholarship playbook, by the way, you go to Amazon and get it there. It's in three formats, paperback, it's in Kindle and also audio book. Uh, you can get it free as, as an audio book. Just go to my website on the resources page at recruitme.com and get a free audio book. If you uh, try that 30-day trial with Audible. I encourage you to do that. Uh, listen together. It makes a difference, okay? Hey, recruiting is a big business. You may have already discovered that uh, as you've been looking at it, diving in, experiencing it, and you have to know how to rise to the top. 
uh, recruiting services, a lot of them out there, they, they present masses of athletes to college coaches, which means there's, there's a lot of traffic, a lot of traffic, and it's easy to get run over by the traffic or ignored altogether by college coaches. But there's hope. I want to bring you hope in this episode, uh, which is illustrated by our, our featured athlete this week. This story comes out of today's Bangor Daily News in Bangor, Maine. And I was so encouraged as I read this because this athlete has got the secret. Um, her name is Camille Katala. Uh, she is a track star. Um, and the article says when her search originally didn't go exactly as planned, and remember recruiting is an up and down experience, she used a more personal touch by combining her writing skills and a 19-foot, 4-inch long jump to advance her cause. Now, that was plan B for her. And as a result, she issued plan B, the result, for Camille. She's attending the University of Alabama beginning this fall, and she's got a scholarship there. How did all this happen? Uh, she, she's a talented athlete. Last winter, uh, she, she was the second best uh, long jumper in state history. Uh, that 19 foot four inch effort that she put forth. Uh, and she also won the 200 and 400 en route to being named the outstanding small school performer at one meet. Uh, so she's good. She's, she's got talent. Remember, we've got to have talent. Got to have talent. You don't have to be the best, but you got to have talent. That's important, but that won't just get you the scholarship as she found out. Uh, the article says that she spent much of last year uh, filling out questionnaires on websites. And I'm sure you've done that too. Uh, there's, that's time consuming. She also went to recruiting sites, but her results were, were limited. That might be where you are right now. And that's where Camille was too. But she said this, that's when I decided that if I want to, if I want people to notice me, I'm going to have to do something myself. So she began writing letters individually, directly to the jump coaches at 35 schools where she was interested. 35 schools. You've got to cast your net wide. She said, I just tried to say something personal about each school and why I liked it and listed all my accomplishments and gave them my SAT scores. Uh, but one thing she did do is she researched teams' standards, the makeup of their rosters, and their academic offerings at the schools. She did her homework. And then she said, she told them this. She said, I'd love to talk to you about your program. Well, that personal touch worked for Camille, and I'm happy for her. She said that uh, coaches from nine or ten D1 programs responded to her letters. Uh, a lot of coaches said that the way I structured the letters was unique and got their attention. Camille said that. Uh, she made official visits to Northeastern and Notre Dame before traveling to Alabama recently, and that's where she landed her scholarship, and that's where she decided to go. She had a choice. She felt that was the best fit. Uh, I know that she uh, <laughs> likes warm weather, and that had something to do with it. Uh, she probably got tired of the main weather in the winter, but that, that's Camille's story. Her her letter writing campaign, she saw this as an option for other students in Maine, student athletes with D1 hopes. Um, Camille said this, she said, Maine has so many fewer kids in general than many other states, and it's just harder to get your name out there in any sport unless you're doing things on the national level. And that's why I think it's good to reach out to specific schools to get their attention. I think a lot of people will be surprised at the types of schools they might get interest from, interest from that they didn't think they could just from reaching out and taking that chance. And that's her secret. That's her secret. And that's our focus of this episode. I want to thank the Bangor Daily News. And they published this. And as I was looking through, it was such an encouraging story. I wanted to let you know about it as well. Well, we are uh, well into this, this episode, but this simple lesson, this simple lesson of having a personal touch can be leveraged for great results, just like it was for Camille. I have been preaching this 
since day one. And now to read this article and see somebody specifically say it worked for her, it's working for other athletes as well. But few athletes are doing this. You can get a leg up. You can get an edge. Um, Boy, (laughs) as Camille found out, one of the most effective ways of getting a college coach's attention is when you simply call him or her by name. Is that hard? No. If making it personal is so important, then how can you do it effectively? There's got to be more than just calling them by name. Yes. And I've got eight things I'm quickly going to share with you. You may want to rewind this and replay it after you listen to this. How to make it personal. One, as we just learned, call the coach and school by name. When you write to the coaches, write to the school, call them by name. Dear Coach Smith, if they're name is Coach Smith. I'd like to play for uh, whatever school it might be. I'd like to compete at Alabama you, by name. So, that, so it stands out. You're not just part of the crowd, and, and it's not just a, a form letter or form email. Secondly, do the research. Camille did this. Know the facts about the program. Take notes. Refer to these things in the course of your contact, not just the first time, but when you start interacting with the coaches. Do your homework. Know about these programs. Third thing, to make it personal, visit if you can. You can't visit them all, of course, but I'll tell you, this will cause the coach to take notice. If on, if on your initiative, and I've mentioned this before, you visit the school and meet with the coach, meet with the coaching staff, look around, that says that, hey, I truly am interested in your program, in your school. Uh, that is how you make it personal. Uh, a fourth thing you can do is call the coach and leave messages. I, you don't want to hound the coach. You don't want to stalk the coach. Make sure when you leave a message that you have, you really do have something to share with the coach, uh, maybe an accomplishment. Uh, perhaps you're going to be competing in their area. Uh, you might have a tournament coming up that you're inviting the coach to. You may be calling just to ask uh, whether they still have interest. Uh, call to ask if they received your information. All that stuff. If you make a phone call, you are going to stand out. That makes it personal. Um, that reminds me of something I meant to tell you earlier. Uh, as I go through these ways to make it personal, uh, I want to make sure that you're you're that this is fitting into your overall recruiting strategy. Isn't just a hit and miss kind of thing, and you do need to have a strategy. So let me point you to my free recruiting masterclass. It's it's a video you can find on my website on the resources page, recruitme.com, and it's on the resources page. There's a tab that says resources. Go ahead and get a hold of the free recruiting masterclass. Watch the video. It's um, step-by-step to your athletic scholarship dream. I take you from the beginning to the end. One of the biggest problems families face is knowing what specific steps to take to get an athletic scholarship. It's a mystery. It's confusing, and I want to take away the mystery. I want to give you clear steps of action so you have confidence and get results quickly. Uh, The clock is ticking for you, and you want to make the most of the time before it's too late. This free recruiting masterclass that I recorded will give you the answers and an easy-to-follow plan. So go and do that. you got to have an overall plan as you apply this personal touch. I'll walk you through the step-by-step process in recruiting from the beginning all the way to the final school choice for your athletic scholarship. Um, By the way, do you have a question for me about anything I've talked about so far? Uh, If so, ask. If you have any questions, ask. John at recruitme.com is where you address your email question to me. And speaking of questions, let's go on to the final four things I have for making it personal. That is ask questions. Number five, ask questions. If you ask good questions, coaches will remember you. You want to stand out. Keeping it personal, ask questions. Six, refer back to things the coach said to you or you've read about the coach, the school, the program. Be a student of the school and program. If you remember things about the coach or program, you'll rise above the rest. Now, this ties back with doing the research, but refer back to that research throughout the process. The coach will 
see that you are personally interested. Seven, share your passions, feelings, and goals. Don't just be a, a face and a number and a voice. You want to be showing your heart, your personality, and who you are. That's how you make it personal, by being that person who has passion, person who has feelings, person who have, has goals. Share that with the coaches. They'll remember you. And finally, number eight, send a short video message every once in a while. You can email it, maybe even text it if you have that relationship with the coach. A quick one-minute video message affirming your interest, maybe reporting on something. Man, I, I imagine very, very few athletes do that. Just a short video message stand out. Wow, we are out of time, and I've got a warning and a final word. Uh, This warning, too personal can hurt your chances. Too personal can hurt your chances. What I mean by that is clean up your social media footprint. Um, That's what you've posted, uh, who your friends are. You might have to drop a few. Uh, Coaches do look at that, and they can see some of that even without your permission. Clean up your social media footprint. And then this final word As I mentioned earlier, you can do all this personal stuff. You can uh, take these eight eight bits of information and advice and follow them, but you've got to be talented, just like Camille was. That's a basis for this. That's a given. And then go on and follow this advice by making it personal. That's the first episode of our Summer Prep podcast series. Summer Prep Podcast Series. As we get ready for the summer, huge recruiting season. I want you to make the most of it. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully you are too. And we'll get the next episode on this series next week. You take care. God bless you.